Welcome everybody. My name is Brandon Leafblad. I'm the co-founder of Audio Fusion Systems, and I'm here today with my friend Doug Gould from Worship MD. How you doing? Hi, Brandon. Thanks for having me. Good. Well, welcome to Austin. Uh, tell me what you've brought with you today. I bought uh, a Series Three Studio Live mixer from PreSonus, uh, which is um, a pretty cool mixer. They come in three sizes, and uh, this is a 32-channel mixer. Uh, in a smaller format, so you're only seeing like 16 of the main faders at a time, then you would page over to okay. get your other channels. Lots of mix outputs. Um, we just upgraded the firmware on this one. So before where it was so many channels of USB, we now have 64 channels back and forth of USB send and return. Uh, it's AVB networkable, so you can also send that way. You can send out analog, you can send out digitally, AES. So lots of cool functions. One of the coolest things I like about it is the fact that you've got a built-in multi-track recorder on an SD card. Okay. So it'll do 32 tracks plus a stereo live stream mix at the same time. So if you're using USB to drive something else, I can use the SD card for like stems pre-recorded to play along with my uh, live tracks. Great, and, great. Uh, then record all of that to something else, either via AB, AVB or USB. Okay. What we're going to do with USB today is what I'm going to have you talk about, I guess, right? Yeah. So uh, so we have the Studio Live connected to Audio Fusion today. I have it connected just by USB out. And as Doug mentioned, with the new firmware that the, the Series 3 has, we actually are seeing 64 channels of audio on Soundcaster. So the way that Soundcaster works, of course, as you guys know, is it will automatically broadcast the first 16 channels that are enabled. And so by default, the way that the mixer, the audio is coming in from the mixer, uh, USB 1 is channel 1, USB 2 is channel 2, but now we have 64 channels to work with. So tell us a little bit about all the different ways that we can route audio sure. into those USB. USB sends can be anything. They can be analog inputs. They can be inputs from the SD card itself, which is what we're going to use for our demo today. Okay. They can be network inputs. Um, but you're not just relegated to channels. You can also use mixes. So if we have, let's say, 64 channels, yeah. and you only have 16 channels on Soundcaster, how are we going to be able to do that? We're going to show out some of the routing is enabling us to do some different things with those 64, because we only have really only 26 tracks on this demo. Okay. So even 26 is more than 16. So what we do in the first example is routing defaults to every channel going to USB sends. And then as you get down beyond the channel count, then you have aux ends, effects, returns, mixes, subgroups, right, whatever right. you're using. Okay. So in our example today, we can show 26 channels plus effects returns for the first 32. Yeah. If somebody has that capability. For Soundcaster, we're probably going to reduce that so we have some channels like lead vocals, roads, strings, whatever. Okay. And then 12 drums we're going to put on a mix. So some of our USB sends are going to be individual channels and some of the USB sends are going to be mixes. Okay. So that we can not have to worry about 12 drums to mix, but just one or two faders for drums, right? All right. So you've got 26 tracks of audio pre-recorded on your right. SD card, mm -hmm. and you're going to play those as if we had 26 live instruments coming into That's the right. mixer. Yep. Okay. Go ahead and hit play on that. We'll see what it shows okay. how it looks sure. on Audio Fusion. All right. As the demo started, you can hear we've got all the audio coming in. And the way that we have the first 32 channels routed, we just have them routed one for one. So channel one is USB one, channel two is USB two. And so you can see that each of these channels are routed. And so if I was to control this mix, I would only get the first 16 of those channels coming into Performer. And so show us on, this, on the Studio Live Mixer how you can create a subgroup and then route those to the individual USB channels so right. that it's a little bit more wieldy for the musicians okay, to handle. So the first thing we'd want to do is we'd want to uh, create a mix of like all those tracks that I don't need to have individual control over. Right. No vocalist wants to pull down kick and hi-hat. <laughs> exactly. So let's just give them one or two faders for drums. We could put it on a mono mix or a stereo mix depending on what you're 
what you want to do. Okay. So on this console, it's really easy. I'm looking at a main mix right now, but if I wanted to create a mix like mix one and make it stereo, I would hit this link button right here, and that would link the odd number with the even number. That's how it works. You okay. can't link two to three. It's sure. always one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to select my drums, and I'm just going to make a mix of my drums, which is 12 individual channels out of the 26, half of them are drums. Right, okay. So now I've got mix one and two uh, all set, and I want to send that as a USB send to one of your Soundcaster channels. Okay. So this board also has the unique ability to soft patch. So I can do it from the console, or I can do it from the software that comes with it, which is called Universal Control. Perfect, okay. Universal Control will give you a much more graphic look at the whole thing, where this is more a little bit more cumbersome because you gotta sure. select and turn a wheel and all that. But I'll show you how to do it on both. Okay. So you go to the home screen here, and you're gonna see audio routing. And then there's gonna be four different boxes, how to set up your AVB, your stage box, ear mixes. We have digital patching right here. So here are my uh, input sources, analog sends, AVB sends. We want USB sends. And you can see on this screen that the USBs by default are all going to be assigned to channels, which is what we have on your first okay. part here. But if I scroll down a little bit and get to channel 33, we're going to start using those other additional channels for an alternative mix for Soundcaster. Okay. So on USB Send 33, I've got drums left. And on 34, drums right. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Um, and I can change any of those sources too. Here you see Mix 1 on 33, but it could actually be anything. It could be a channel, it could be a mix, it could be an effects return, it could be anything you want it to be. Um, if you go down to look at the other channel assignments, you see that there's some individual channels there. And they don't have to come into their actual channel input to be on a USB output. That's what it defaults to, but you can make anything, anything. So what we can do on Soundcaster is we can actually disable the first 32 channels. So then now I have here selected on Soundcaster just those 10 channels that you've routed those sub-mixes into. Right. And some of them are individual channels, some of them are sub-mix, like right. the drum mix. And now those are what's showing up here on, on Performer. And now I have control over each of those individually, plus those additional effects sends. Yeah, pretty cool. Perfect. And then we still have a bunch left. That's right. We have up yeah. to 64. That's only gotten us up to 48 so far. So. Right. Um, so what about uh, using Audio Fusion in conjunction with the QMix app? It's a great idea. And because you can assign like a mix of everything to two channels of Soundcaster, so now they got all the channels on only two channels of Soundcaster, so every musician maybe have a different mix. Okay. Right? And you pull out QMix UC, keep performer in the background, and now you can mix those channels individually. Great. So, so on our uh, last 16 channels, you have routed all of the individual auxiliary mixes. So we've got AUGS 1 through AUGS 16. So if, if as a performer, if this musician was assigned to say, uh, for example, AUGS 3 and 4 as my stereo pair, then I would just go into AUGS 3, pan that to the left, right. go into AUGS 4, pan that to the right, right, and I would mute all of the other additional auxiliary sends, so I'm just listening to my two. Right. Then I'd leave Performer running in the background, mm -hmm. and I pull up my QMix app, I pull that on top, and now I have access to all 24 tracks. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Running with uh, the QMix control on top, and complete stereo control with performer delivering the audio to my ears in the background. Right. Perfect. And then I can EQ that entire mix beforehand for them. You can't obviously EQ on performer or on right. Q mix. Right. But I can do that from the console pre pre uh, 
getting to your device. You know, the other thing I love about having 64 channels on the USB is that if you're using 32 of those channels for recording in a DAW, then you can you can still have all those individual channels raw, right? And you can use the other 32 channels right. for submixes, effects, right? Um, and individual channels for your personal monitor mix. Whatever you want to do, yeah. right? We just came out with a 64S, which actually has capability of doing 64 analog back and forth, right? With stage boxes in addition to it. Okay. Now the SD card will still only record 32 at a time. But your US, your computer could be recording 64 channels at a time, or playing back 64 channels, Great. or having live tracks and pre-recorded tracks combined. So, for using Soundcaster in that scenario, you probably would want to put your tracks on an SD card and play those out to Soundcaster and use your computer for recording. Okay. Right. Uh, so, if you're using for a lot of worship leaders, of course, use uh, Ableton Live mm -hmm. or uh, some other software in order to run tracks into the into the studio live. Um, so now they can run those tracks in on some of those USB channels, right. mix with live instruments, and then they all come back together exactly over the right. same USB for Soundcaster, and they can choose whichever ones they want to include in the mix. Yeah. It allows the sound engineer to get a lot more practice when they can have pre-recorded tracks to yeah. like do virtual sound checks, practice his mixing chops, get set up, you can actually run monitor mixes with Soundcaster or Wedges even, and get it all kind of set up before the musicians even get there. So, pretty handy. Great. Well, thanks, Doug. Appreciate yeah, you coming. Thanks for having me.